Hey, Tunji again from Caesar Graphics, and I am the Caesar. All right, today I'm going to be teaching you how to create adventure movie poster. You can use the technique from this tutorial to achieve any adventure movie poster. So, if you need the exercise file, simply make use of the link in the description section of this video. So, sit back, relax, and let's go. So I'm going to click on file now and I'm going to select new and so for this project I'm going to make my width 720 and height is going to be 900 all right my resolution is going to be 100 and I'm going to tag this son of the so I'll leave every other settings the way they are and I'm going to select the create button I'm going to create a solid layer I'll call this BG one all right, and I'm going to apply my foreground color to the layer, okay? So I'm going to hold down Alt and hit the backspace to apply the color of my foreground. And I'm going to drag my building image in here like so. And this should be somewhere here. And I'll make this a bit smaller, all right? And this should be here. I'm going to make a copy of this. And this should be here. And this needs to be smaller. Then it should be somewhere around here. Alright, then I'm going to drag the wood image in like so and I'll make this a bit smaller also and this should be somewhere around here and this should be behind the building layer, alright? So I'm going to just make this a bit smaller like so and I'm going to select the, I'm going to hit the enter key on my keyboard. So then I'm going to add levels to the wood layer. So I'm going to click on the clip icon because I only want this to affect the wood layer, okay? Then I'm going to click on the property tab here and then just make this darker like so, all right? We can even this go this way, all right? And the next thing I'm going to do is to put the buildings in a group, all right? And I'm going to call this building. Okay, then I'm going to drag my smoke image in and I'm gonna select the enter key and this should be here and I'll move this in between the house group folder and the wood background and I'm gonna change my blend mode to screen and this should be here and I'll add levels to this again and I'm gonna click on the clip icon and this should go in here like so so for this, I'm going to rasterize this. I'll right click on the layer and select rasterize. Now the reason why I'm selecting rasterize is because I want to convert the layer to black and white. So I'm going to hold down Ctrl Shift and U to convert this to black and white. And I'm going to make this bigger. All right, I'm going to make it bigger. And this should go up here like so. All right. So I can even make a copy of this. Just select the two layers and just you know move this here. All right, and I can add layer max to this and select the brush to increase my brush size. Now make sure you're on the soft round brush when you are doing this, okay? So I'm just going to gently apply the brush to this side. Now, boy, before applying the brush, please make sure that your foreground is set to black, okay? So uh, I'm going to just quick, gently take that out like so, and I'm going to do the same thing to this. Just try to take this out here like so. So I'm going to put all of this in. I'm going to put the layers in a group. All right. So I'm going to call this BG. Okay. Then um. So in order to create unity on this project, I'm going to reduce the brightness of the building. So I'm going to add curve to this, and I'm going to click on the clip icon and just make this go darker like so. And I'm just going to push this down. Just make it a bit darker. Let's make it go up a bit, like so. Okay, and I'm going to add hue, saturation to this. And then we're going to click on the clip icon. Now, this time, I'm just going to dial down the saturation because I don't want the color on the building to, you know, to be stronger, right? So I'm just going to make it go down to about this level. All right, now, so for this, I think I still need to make this go darker a bit more. All right, sorry. We go back a bit more on this, this here, like so. Alright, because this is going to be on the background. 
so i want to add touch of yellow to the building all right so what to do that i need to add selective color adjustment so i'm going to click on the selective color adjustment here and i'm going to select the clip icon here to say i only want this to affect the building uh, group and i'll switch down to neutrals here all right now the reason i'm selecting neutrals is because if you look at the building i have this you know grayish uh, you know feel on the building and this will affect the gray part of the building all right so i'm going to just move this down to the side like so all right and i'm gonna add little um, red all right so the opposite of cyan here is red and the opposite of magenta here is blue and the opposite of yellow here is green so now i'm going to move this to this side to add red to it just to give it that little orange um you know look all right let's just reduce the opacity a bit because it looks as if this is too strong all right so then um, the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add another um cloud to this so i'm going to just drag this and drop here and i just you know make it bigger and right click and select rasterize and i'm going to convert this to black and white with the shortcut which is ctrl shift and u all right and i'm going to go to my blend mode here and select screen all right so now this needs to be somewhere around here uh so this is affecting the building so i'm going to add a layer max to this and just select the brush tool and just gently take it out from you know some part of the building like so um let's just add levels to this and just make this a bit uh you know darker all right so i want to separate the you know the highlight from the shadow so i'm going i'm going to just move this down to the side like so and i think this is okay for now add the characters all right so i'm going to start from this so i'm going to drag that and drop here and just position this somewhere around here like so and i'm going to drag the next character in and now drag that and drop here and this should be smaller a bit like so all right and the last person is going to be this and this should be somewhere around here and i'm going to scale this down like so and this need to go down a bit like so all right so just position this here so i'm going to shift select the layers and i'll move this here i'm going to zoom out and activate the fill transform and just down this down just make it reduce it all right i just want to reduce it and i'll position this here and um i'll make this go up a bit more like so and this should come out here like so and just gonna move this i'll move this up a bit more and this should go up also so i'm going to put this in a group so i'll hit ctrl g on my keyboard all right and i'll call these dudes okay and then the next thing i'm going to do is to add the rain image and i'll make this bigger and i'll hit the enter key and i'll go straight to my blend mode here and choose screen all right so it looks as if my rain here is too thick so i'm going to reduce the size of my rain and position it here hit the enter key and i'm going to make a copy of this and i'll drag this down a bit all right and let's just make this level all right so i'm just gonna move this here all right so um so i'm gonna select the two layers and hit ctrl e to weld so i'm gonna make this bigger all right and i'll change my blend mode to screen and i'm going to zoom in all right if you look at the picture of the subject here you see there's this rain effect on their body so we need to make our rain image go the same angle the rain on their body is to, so as to you know make a good connection on um, the project so now i'm going to right click and select skew all right and i'm going to just move this to the side like so because the rain is, uh, is facing this angle so i'm going to move this to this side also and i'll position this here right click free transform and i'm just going to make this bigger and select the enter key on my keyboard and then we have this all right now the next thing i'm going to do is to add the smoke image again and i'm going to make this bigger like so all right and i'll hit the enter key all right so what i'm going to do now is to right click on the layer and rasterize the layer and now i'm going to hold down ctrl shift and u and then i'm going to hit ctrl i on my keyboard to reverse you know the image all right so then 
all right i'm going to change my blend mode to screen and yeah it should be screen then i'm going to add the layer marks to this all right and this should come down here a bit like so all right then i'm going to click on the thumbnail of the layer mask and select the brush tool okay then i'll increase my brush size and make sure that my foreground is set to black all right so i'm going to gently um, take this out from the scene all right so i am going to brighten this so i'm going to use the levels adjustment to do this i'll activate the levels adjustment and that and i'm just gonna you know move this up like so and this should follow okay so i'm going to clip this i'm going to click on the layer mask of the levels and i'm just going to smooth the you know the effect a bit i need to go to my brush setting here and turn off shape dynamic all right and transfer should be checked okay so um so if you have a graphics tablet you can turn your transfer option to pen pressure here and you're still going to achieve the same you know move i'm making here but if you don't have a graphics tablet you can turn your flow down to eight or ten and you're still going to achieve the same uh, move all right so i'm just going to gently take this out here from here like so i'm going to do the same thing here and then i'm going to click on this and just gently take this out from here like so all right so uh, the next thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to create a new layer and i'm going to call this white smoke select the enter key and then now uh, so i'm going to switch to white here and i'm going to zoom out all right then i'm going to gently apply the brush to the layer like so all right so i'll reduce my brush okay and then just going to gently apply that here so what i'm doing now is to add fire sparks okay so i have that in the exercise file here so i'm going to drag that and drop like so and I can even make this bigger a bit and hit the enter key on my keyboard and position this here. All right, so I'll change this to screen and this should be here, like so. I can even make a copy of this and this should be somewhere here. And I'll activate the filter so I just you know rotate this a bit and this should be somewhere around here, like so. All right, then another thing I'm gonna do now is I'm going to click on this, all right, and go to. I'm going to select the second, the very first fire spark layer, and I go to filter. I'll select blur gallery and select the field blur option here. Make my field blur six, and I'm going to select the OK uh, button, all right. So, uh, yeah, so that's it. So then I'm going to make a copy of this again, all right. And this time on this one, I'm not going to, I don't want the field blur layer on this. So I'm going to delete it. All right. And this should be behind this like so. All right. And um, what I'm going to do again is I'm going to make a copy of this. And this should be, um, this should be behind the layer of my subjects here. So I'm going to push this out. So what I'm trying to achieve here now is to create splash particles. Okay. So I'm going to right click on the layer and select rasterize and i'm going to hit ctrl i on my keyboard and i'm going to change my blend mode to multiply all right now you see we have all these particles here but the reason why we are seeing these blue colors is because the color is the we still have the original color of the sparks so to change this to um dark particles so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold on ctrl shift and u and then you see we have it like the way I want it. So I'm going to even make this a bit bigger by, you know, activating the free transform and I'll zoom in and then you see we have the particles here. So let's make a copy of this again and just, you know, position this somewhere around here so as to just make the project look more interesting. So I'm going to select the brush tool and I'm going to select this um, layer here and I'm just going to gently take this out like so and I'm going to do the same thing here and just, you know, take this out just take this down like so and for this you can even select the eraser tool and just you know 
now make sure that on your razor to make sure you have your transfer check and your control should be on pen pressure so if you don't have a graphics template you can reduce your flow to eight and you're still going to achieve the same you know move so i'm go just going to gently take this out like so i can even make my brush bigger all right now the reason why i'm doing this is because i'm still i'm still not getting that smoke effect that i'm looking for on the project so i'm going to drag the smoke image again and drop here like so and i'm going to check where i have more of the smoke effect i think i have it here so i'm going to hit the enter key on my keyboard and i'm going to right click and say rasterize and i'm going to hold down ctrl shift and u to convert it to black and white and i'll go to my blend mode here and select screen all right so then um i'm going to move this around here now you see we're beginning to see the smoke effect but in order to make this more stronger what i'm going to do is to activate levels on the layer and just click on the clip icon to say i only want this to affect the layer uh beneath under it okay so then i'm going to move this to this side and you know i'm going to make this brighter like so and make it darker like so and make this brighter now you see we're beginning to see the smoke effects the way we want it so then i'm going to move this to this side and activate the free transform and just rotate this like so and just position it here all right then i'll add a layer mask to this and select the brush tool and just take this out like so all right so i can even you know just gently take this out from here like so and we can make a copy of this and just randomly position this where we think it will look more more better all right so i can make this bigger like so and just this one this here like so select the layer again select the brush tool and just you know gently take this out from the face of the subjects like so all right so we can now go back to this layer and then select the brush tool and then add this back to the scene and then we have this all right now this is looking better compared to what we had before so i can even push this out a bit all right and this can also go up a bit now we need to take it out from here so select the layer mask of this layer and just take it out from here like so all right so we can you know make a copy of this again and move this here like so and we can take this out from here like so now this is good so then i'll go to this layer now and just let me take this add this to the layer and then we have this uh so for this i think i over apply it so i'm going to select this select the eraser tool and just take it out from here because i'm losing that spark um effect okay so i'm going to move this down a bit okay and do the same thing to this and just gently take this down and take it out from here because this parks is also part of the scene so it's good we make it visible so i'll move this up a bit like so all right now this is good so uh the next thing we are going to do is to add the color lookup adjustment but before we add the color lookup adjustment it's always good to make our layer panel neat so uh to do that i'm going to put all of this in a group all right and i'll go to the color lookup adjustment now and change this to horror blue all right uh so as you can see this is affecting the um you know the entire project so we need to reduce the opacity of this to something around let's say all right two is fine and i'm going to zoom in so it's time for us to make this look more interesting so what i'm going to do now is to add the selective color and um i'm going to add um you know blue to the project so i'm going to go under cyan here and i'm going to just move this out here like so so then um on my yellow here i'm gonna draw this in to make this more bluish like so all right now this is looking more like it so um the next thing i'm going to do is to add yellow to the project so i'm going to add color balance and under my mid-tone here i'm going to move 
I'm gonna add yellow like so and I'm gonna add red here like so now this is affecting the entire project but I only want this to affect the face of my subjects all right so I'm gonna double click on the layer to activate the layer style so I'm gonna move from this side down like so all right now you see we're beginning to see the blue on the face of our subjects and um, so I'm gonna move this to this side and hold down alt and click to break the slider and this should go in more like so and this should go out like so all right so let's see the before and the after now this is making sense already okay so what i'm doing now is to reduce the strength of blue on the shadow so i'm going to add hue saturation to this and i'm just going to dial this down now this is affecting the entire project so but we need to now double click on the layer to blend the this again so we are going to move from this side down because we still want to have those that blue effect on the project but we want to reduce reduce it on the shadow so i'm going to hold down alt and break the slider and this should go this side and this should go this side like so now you see that we now have the shadow looking cool already so before and after all right so the next thing i'm going to do is to add hue saturation again and just increase the saturation of the project so i'm going to move this up like so all right now this is too strong on the project so i'm going to double click on this again to activate the layer style all right now what i'm going to do now is just only to apply the saturation to the face of my subject so i'm going to move this side down like so all right and I'm going to hold on out and break the slider and just, you know, move this to this side and just move this out like so. Now, this is looking cool already. So, then um, the, project is looking, the project is looking too dark. So, then I'm going to go straight to my brightness here and just increase the brightness a bit. All right. I'm going to increase the brightness a bit just like so. And I'm going to add the picture of the samurai. So, I'm going to drag, drag, drag that and drop it here and just gonna push this down and position this somewhere around here like so and i'm just gonna make this a bit bigger and this should be here like so and this should be right here all right now the reason why we need to position this so as to have that color uh those you know color effect on the face or the body of our layer all right so then i'm gonna zoom in and zoom in like so and create a new layer and i'm gonna call this shadow all right so i hold down i hold down alt and click on the new layer icon to activate the new la new layer uh, setting here so i'm going to select the ok button and make sure that your foreground is set to black and i'm going to zoom in here like so select the brush to reduce the brush size all right and I'm going to gently apply my brush here like so. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing here. No. It should be here. Do the same thing here. Just gently apply that here. So and we have this. This is looking okay. I can even just gently apply the shadow here. I think I still need to make this, um, you know, my background here more darker. So what I'm going to do is to go to... Um, to click on the levels adjustment here and then i'm going to click on the levels again and this time i'm just going to gently apply this like so because this is taking more attention here and i don't want that to happen so i'm just going to gently make it a bit darker like so we can now make a copy of the layer and i'll make my the, i'll make the layer mask of this layer black so i'll hold down Alt and backsplace to apply black to the layer to the layer max. Now, what I just did here is to hide the layer, all right? So then I'm going to change my blend mode to multiply. Alright, and I'm going to select my brush to click on the layer mask I, uh, thumbnail and I'm going to select the brush to now. I'm going to switch to white. So white is going to make the layer visible now. So I'm going to select the brush to um, I'm going to select my brush to here and increase my brush. And let's see if I can. Let's use a soft round brush for this. All right, good. So I'm going to increase my brush size, and then I'm good. I'm just going to gently apply that to the scene, like so. So let's just gently apply this to the scene, just like so. All right. 
so before and after so for this I'm going to um, reduce then I'll go to the settings of this curve and just push this out so all right then I'll go back here select the brush to increase my brush size and just gently apply this to the project like so all right I'll do that here now this is looking cool all right so we can even do that apply the brush here so I over apply it so I hit X on my keyboard to switch to um, you know black here so I'm just gonna gently apply this here like so and um, so for this for the wood uh, I think I still need to make that a bit darker but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reduce the opacity all right a bit okay so I'm gonna click to hide this and now let's see what we have all right so I'm gonna stand visible of the layer I'm gonna stand visible uh, the project by holding out ctrl shift alt and e and I'm going to right click and say convert to smart object so now we're taking this to camera Raw to do the final color grading so I'll go to filter here and select camera Raw filter open the basic and I'm gonna add yellow to the project all right then um yeah so for the exposure i'm going to increase the exposure a bit just to make the project more brighter and um so for my contrast here i'm just going to dial that up like so and my highlight here needs to go down all right the shadow needs to go down also so as to you know make this side of my project more darker and then um for my um for the white and black i'm going to leave that as is and um for i'll go straight to my vibrance here and i'm going to increase the vibrance a bit and i'll close this and on the i'll leave the curve for now and i'll go to sharpen and just you know increase the sharpen like so so as to add more contrast to the pixels and on that my color mixer here i want more yellow so i'm going to just i want more orange excuse me so i'm going to just add more orange to this and increase the yellow a bit like so we can even add more red all right just to boost the red on the project like so all right so then um i'll close this and under my effect here i'm gonna increase the grain like so so as to add more you know noise to the project and i'm gonna select the ok button so then i'm gonna put everything here in our group all right so i'm gonna put everything here in our group all right then it's time for me to add my text okay so i'm gonna be very fast with this so i have the title here already so i'm going to copy that should be here all right so i think this is it uh so we need to add vignette all right so we need to add vignette before hitting the ok button so to do that i'm going to go back to the effect tab all right so under the effect tab oh excuse me effect tab 
all right then i'm gonna add vignette to this like so okay and i'm gonna select the okay button now and then we have this all right wow i'm glad you made it to the end of this tutorial if you have not subscribed remember to hit the subscribe button and remember to click the post notification bell so you get notified when i post my tutorials share like and comment on this video and i'll see you again in the next one peace